you been coming along? Um, good. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. What's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? Um, right now, I'm on the logical reasoning portion, and I feel like I'm getting it, but I'm not getting it, and I'm not sure if that's typical with these kinds of, or with this section. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm on the shorter timeline, um, but I guess one of my questions is how much time should be spending on each day as far as like if I'm going through 20 questions you know I'm gonna have to review so how long does it typically take you don't want to go so in depth that you that you feel overwhelmed so you may want to get more selective in terms of which specific problems you review in depth okay yeah because I, I do review them the thing is I guess what I'm noticing is even when I feel like I understand it I'm a little iffy on whether I'm understanding it or not. So I don't know. Um, I guess I was going to ask if if I could get the um, Google Doc for logical reasoning for a Socratic review because I know that there's different types that you have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know if you have. Um, and then the other was in and out questions, but I saw that you were going to have a um, there's a session on Tuesday for conditional um, the conditional games or setup. Um, so I think I'll just wait until Tuesday. With yeah, watch the recording of the one from last week as well. Yeah, that one actually helped a lot. Um, I think what I was doing was I was not following the chain, which I think mm -hmm. is probably a, a normal thing to do. I mean, the first step is to create the chain. The next step is to learn to properly interpret the chain as you solve the questions. And so last week we focused on creating the chain, mm -hmm. which itself is a whole thing because of the requirement to take contrapositives and link things together smoothly. The next step after that is, okay, well, how do you make sure you're always reading it correctly and then using it efficiently to solve the questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it clicked last week. Um, I so I'm definitely going to go to the one on Tuesday. Um, for so logical fallacies, uh, would you say it's best not to memorize them, but what's the best method in making sure that I understand them? Because once I get to the answer choices, some of the text is very dense. I know it's it's meant to trip you up, <laughs> um, but I guess what's the best, I feel like for me to perform well, I have to really understand the, the subject before I go into answering the questions. So I think that's why I'm getting tripped up and taking a long time because I feel like I don't actually understand or I don't have that, the confidence that I understand what I'm, the material before I go into the, the questions, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the choices only make sense in the context of the stimulus. So you've got to make sure you understand the stimulus well. Mm -hmm. And that's where you want to focus your review process after the fact, if you don't feel you understood the stimulus thoroughly. Okay. So really making sure you've got the argument down, you've got the flaw down, you can articulate it in your own words, you can paraphrase the stimulus, and you'll see in the Socratic Review Method documents, the previous classes I've been teaching around this, I might even take a general principle out of that stimulus and then make up an analogous situation, applying mm -hmm. that principle or applying that flaw in the case of a flaw question. This takes time, but you can't get this from an explanation. Yeah. Is it you're putting something of your own into it? All right. Um, and then for the answer choices when I'm going through them, am I do you suggest rewriting each one of them in my own terms as well? If it would be useful for you. Are there if there are choices that you don't thoroughly understand or you're not sure about, especially with abstract language? So what I've noticed is when I go and answer the questions, I always choose the right one in the beginning. And if I get it wrong, it's because I went through and I try to analyze each one of them. But usually the right one tends to stick out. And then I tell myself, like, I can't rush it. I have to actually re review each answer because I don't want to get into the habit of just choosing the first one. And then once I review the rest of them, I end up choosing the wrong one. So um, yeah, that's where I'm at with my city. Okay, so it's possible that, let's say if the answer is A, A clicks for you, you pick it, and you're good, mm -hmm. but there are other choices that are tempting as well. And so if the correct answer E instead, you might have been tempted by one earlier. Mm -hmm. So those tempting wrong answers, you've got to review those as well. You don't always have to comprehensively review all five choices. That's part of what can make this process take too long sometimes. But reviewing mm -hmm. the tempting wrong answer, as well as the 
unappealing right answer or what might have made it unappealing is, is useful to do, especially those tempting wrong answers. Okay. And then um, for, as I noticed in some of the videos, um, you've discussed like diagramming. Um, I can't say that I feel strong in that area. I'm not sure if, um, I know you said you don't recommend diagramming for logical reasoning questions, um, but if I were to want to practice that just so that I have that skill, is there anything that you have as far as like worksheets or anything like that? Well, I wouldn't say to never diagram logical reasoning. It depends on mm -hmm. the situation. So there are some question types where diagramming can be useful. Sufficient assumption questions in particular, mm -hmm. some inference questions, some parallel questions. If you watch, for example, my workshop on sufficient assumption questions, the entire focus is around thinking about the stimuli and getting to the answer in a structural, formal, logic way. Mm -hmm. So I would start there if you're looking for the formal logic diagramming approach. Okay. But for a lot of question types, most of them, in my view, it doesn't really make sense because it's informal reasoning. Deductions and diagramming and contrapositives and connections are not going to get you there for strengthen questions or weaken questions, for example. Okay. So then, yeah, I'm on sufficient assumption. I'm doing those jobs today, so that's probably why I haven't seen it. So I've noticed a lot of the questions that I do have end up getting answered later down the line. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. Yeah, just keep working through the material and you'll, you'll see what you need. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I think, I think the main thing that I was struggling with for logic games is that I tend to um, make more inferences than they should be um, or the wrong inferences. And then I get, um, I feel like I do too much work. And then I end up having to do more work as I'm going through it. So it's doing a lot of work throughout. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And so part of that just comes down to properly interpreting your diagram and not making supposed inferences that don't actually play out. And so that's a lot of what tomorrow night's class on games is going to be. Okay. Basically things like not reading backwards on an arrow, that sort of thing. Yeah. Two variables side by side, the directionality means everything. Yeah, I would say that in and out games are the ones that are giving me the most trouble. The other games I, are easy. They're actually fun. Um, but I think part of the problem, too, is maybe I'm doing a lot of studying because I definitely feel like I've been dreaming a lot about the LSAT, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the I questions. So I feel like my mind's not really getting a break to process everything. Well, so take a break. Have you been taking breaks? Yeah, I took a break last night um, to uh, watch a movie. I watched The Grinch. Uh, That's but good. Yeah, part of it is I, I work a full-time job too. So it's, I try to squeeze studying in the morning and the weekends and, and evenings. So I don't mind it, but I definitely, I, I can see why breaks are necessary. Yeah, I mean, but you took off an evening. Yeah. What if you took off a day? Uh, yeah, I should probably do that next weekend. <laughs> what's, your, what's your target test date? <laughs> My target test date is January 15th. Um, I was thinking about pushing it back a month um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have the ability to do so. I was thinking if I took it in January 15th, I could see where I needed to work with areas, but, um, I'm starting to think that maybe that's not giving myself enough time to process. Cause I, I feel like I get it. It's just, it's a lot of information. And then once I try to analyze certain things, I, that's where I'm getting tripped up is that I, I confuse myself if that, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's common. <laughs> oh, totally. I mean, this part of this relates to overthinking. Uh -huh. As simple as that. Yeah. But whether you do January or you do February, you can certainly afford to take off a day. Agreed. Yeah. I'll be better about taking breaks. <laughs> awesome. And definitely come to the classes. It's great to get that community and support. There's a lot of students who struggle with finding the right balance uh -huh. in terms of what to put in. For example, there's one student tonight who I'm going to bring in talking about her issues taking time off, another student who's deciding between January and February. So a lot of folks okay. are in the exact same boat as you. Sounds good. All right. All right, then. Yeah, I, as far as uh, additional questions, those were my main concerns. I know I had reached out last week about the in and out games, but um, I will save my questions for um, Tuesday session. Perfect. All right, Gabby, it was great connecting with you. I'll see you then. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. 
please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.